So now it's time for a quick modeling exercise. Um, we're going to be modeling a building by uh, famous architect Oscar, Brazilian architect. Um, so yeah, you should all have access to the image I'm about to import. There's two ways of importing an image. You can simply just drag and drop the image like this and then click on picture OK and just scale the image to whatever you feel is necessary or you can import it by typing in picture in the command prompt like this and it'll just this will come up a Windows Explorer menu and then you can select your image from there so I can, as you can see here um, this is our image imported um, so what we'll do is we'll try to um, copy the profile of this um, project and then generate the whole building from that profile. Um, so we'll expand the right menu, uh, right viewport over here, and we will start by modeling um, some of the elements. Um, because it uh, will only be modeling half of this because we'll be using a Rhino command to um, rotate the, the, the profile that we're going to draw around an axis. So uh, first things first, we will draw a series of polyline and, um, and curves. Um, so first things first, so wherever you find um, so roughly eyeball the center point and we can start drawing from there. So we've selected um, wrong tool here we want to select interpolate points start from the center point and then through a series of points you can start drawing the profile of the building we'll end up here just before the drainage and click enter as you can see here we have um, it's very difficult to see the line um, so what we'll do is we'll go on layers we'll click on this and we'll change the layer of this image from default to layer one. And then we'll go on the default layer over here and change the black color to a red color. So we can see here the line is now red, um, still not very clear. So what we'll do again is just click on the image, um, go on properties, uh, we'll go on material and just make it slightly a bit more transparent. So we can see it better. Um, since we have the image on a different layer, we can go ahead and lock that layer. So it will stop us from selecting the image every time we want to change. So you can see here, it's a lot more clear now. Um, what we'll do is I'll just draw, I'll just draw a orthogonal line um, down here. So I'll click on ortho and you can see here, I can draw orthogonal line. So now I have a reference to my midpoint. I'll unclick ortho again because I want to draw curves um, and then it's time to draw some polylines so I'll simply go in here and just draw in the drainage like this. Wherever we have straight segments we'll just carry through so over here, over there and back to the line. Um, a quick um, tip is if you want to draw orthogonal lines without keep on without clicking on orth ortho every single time is to hold down shift and this will lock the line in an orthogonal way. So now what we can do is uh, and by hovering over and extending a certain point I can make sure I click onto the extension of that point so I can do this. So click enter then I would just want to copy this line. So if I type in copy, as you can see here, it's asking me to uh, copy the line from a certain point. So what I want to do is just click on this point and then hold on shift and then just drag it down and then enter. You can see here we have a slight overlap. So one of the options we can do is the trim command, select the cutting object, which is this, enter, select the object to trim, which is this and then we can see that's much more clean. We can do the same here, so we'll select the point, copy, we'll move the point by holding down shift, here, enter, and then we can do the same, so trim, 
select the cutting objects um, so this this enter and select the object to cut like this and by clicking right click on the mouse I can um, invoke the same command again so select the cutting objects which is this enter the objects to cut and I can see I've made it a lot, a lot more clearer cleaner here yeah. Now, if we go back here, we can do the same. So, polyline, because we have the um, near object snap selected here, you can just simply hover over, hold down shift, and draw the internal walls as such. Now, what we want to do is um, we want to, to choose the interpolate points curve. The reason we're choosing this over this is because we want to have control over which points the curve actually goes through, rather um, external points, because we are um, copying a, a certain curve rather than generating one. So we'll just go here, we'll start off with the horizontal point, one up, and you can see here, enter. If you feel that the points are a bit off, you can just simply select on these control points and move them however you want. You can also delete them if you want. So now we have a, a better looking curve. Just carry on again by selecting. Um, if you make any mistake, you can just do press Control Z. Select a polyline and just carry on over here. Enter. Now this curve is slightly off. Rather than deleting it and starting again, what I can do is just move this over here. And because I have um, the uh, object snapped enable I can I can do a good job over there so if I turn this layer off I can see now I have a, a good looking profile for the building I just want to do a bit of cleaning here so again trim select this point and this little nib over here so now we have this um, single curve as you can see, it's still made out of lots of different line segments. So what we can do is um, we can um, just use this line for the moment. We'll draw a new reference line in a sec. You can select all these lines and then just type in join. And now we've joined all the lines into three enclosed curves. You can turn the line back on. Um, I just want to draw a new reference over here to carry on. Um, so now um, we can carry on tracing. So let's start off here. Right to the end over here. Up there. And then back down again. Once we get here, we want to use the curves again. Sorry, wrong curve. So um, we need to click on this one. And as you can see here, this enables us to have very good control over the lines that we're drawing. Once we get here, just press enter. Continue tracing. With our polyline over here, like this, As you can see, I'm using the reference points here to make sure all my lines are aligned.
So now if I turn off all the layers, um, just do a bit of clean, clean a bit. So over here, get rid of this. So now I can join this. And join these lines as well as soon as I close them. Join. So now I should have two separate lines. Perfect. Now I can just simply draw a window over here. So I click enter, enter, and I can move these to a new layer, layer two. And have it represented in blue over there. Just unhide this. Now, if we go on the perspective drawing, you can see that I have the profile drawn out completely. So, what I can do now is select the lines, go on the tools, and choose the uh, this tool, which is revolve first asking me to select the curves to revolve so I select the curves, press enter the axis, so the line will re revolve around and that will be a z-axis um, through the middle of what I've drawn so far so like this and if I go on the top viewport it's now asking me for the angle so I want to do a full re revolve so I'll start from zero and end at 360 and click enter and enter. Now if I hide this and go on to the renderers view I can see that I have the pavilion drawn out like this. If I go and shade it it's perhaps clearer um, and then I can select these two and have them, um, sorry, and move them to layer three. I'll go back to the default and turn it into red. So as you can see here, now I have the pavilion modeled. To draw sections, we use something called a clipping plane in Rhino. So click on clicking plane, clipping plane, and we have different options over here. So three point vertical center and um, around curve. Um, I want a vertical plane, so I click vertical here, and I will just draw a line using the Alt command, so I know it's planar, and draw a section like this. I can move this section anywhere and works in a plane so it doesn't matter if it's not completely intersecting with my project I can do it like this if I go on properties click on the plane I can change the color over here Play color to show the edges that it's cutting through. So what I can do now is if I want to export a section, I can go on the perspective angle, choose the angle that I want. We can set up cameras for this and save the cameras. And then using the make 2D command, I can select the objects that I want to draw by selecting from right to left and then pressing enter. And this um, then gives me a menu where I can click on or choose the different edges or um, I want to show. Um, so at the moment, just keep the settings that they are and click OK. And then now if I go on the top menu, uh, top view, I see I have a line drawing of my museum over here, which I can export and use in Illustrator. 
each one of these lines is in a separate layer, which makes it easy to edit, and in, in separate colors as well, and dotted line meshes. And this is very useful for drawing diagrams and uh, having line drawings for your section. You can also overlap this with a render. Um, so Rhino doesn't have a good render built in. Um, you, people often use uh, V-Ray with Rhino, or you have the option to export Rhino to other software such as Maya, 3ds Max, Lumion, um, etc. to um, render. So that's the end of the tutorial today. Hopefully that was um, useful. If you have any um, questions or need any help with using Rhino in your project, please drop by. Um, I'll have the office hours at the end of this video.